Go ahead. All right, I'm Sesh Sayani, Senior Product Manager at Gigamon. We'll talk about software-defined visibility and programmable visibility fabric. So here's the agenda. Why visibility? Why is visibility important? What is software-defined visibility and how does it help network transformation? We'll double-click on the control and the application layers with respect to the visibility fabric itself, walk through some use cases. And also JDSU, our friend and partner here, will talk about, uh, give an overview of their portfolio a little bit, and then also talk about the Gigamon integration. And then we'll wrap it up with the REST API demo that we have in place. All right, why visibility? What is driving this need for visibility? There's a lot of security threats, increasing security, security threats that are going on in your enterprise. You cannot secure what you cannot see. So the more, the see more, secure more mantra is the more traffic you see, the more you can secure. So to get that, you obviously need pervasive visibility. There's also this other trend about virtualization. East-West traffic patterns are driving your virtualized infrastructure. How do you get visibility into that infrastructure as well? And then how do you get visibility while in motion as these VMs migrate from one cluster to another? The next thing is blind spots. As you have encrypted traffic, there's a lot of SSL encryption going on. How do you get visibility into the SSL blind spots? With VXLAN encapsulation, we are here at Cisco Live talking about ACI infrastructure. They use VXLAN. How do you get visibility into the VXLAN encapsulated traffic? Those are some of the blind spots that you might need to monitor as well. And then finally, as this new, new technologies evolve, the white box, the SDN, VMware, NSX, Cisco, ACI, how do you get pervasive monitoring for these new technologies as well? The key drivers, again, to summarize, the key drivers, security, distributed apps, the blind spots with encryption and encapsulation, and then as you migrate from your 10 gig to 40 gig networks, how do you maintain visibility, and how do you preserve your tool infrastructure as well while, through these upgrades? <clears throat> Some of these pain points that people usually, customers usually do is, as these customer, as the networks upgrade and migrate, they start adding these tools all over the network to capture traffic endpoints or traffic to, to get the visibility, but that's not a good solution because you've got tools problem number one, and then you, you, are, you have to feed copies of the traffic to these tools. So how, there's a better way. This is, you have your traditional network, right, at the firewall, uh, let me see if I can get, at, at the firewall and the cloud, and then the core switch, the spine and the leaf switch. And then you have your monitoring tooling infrastructure at, this, at the side. So how do, you, how do you feed this traffic into the tooling infrastructure or the monitoring infrastructure? So you, you can tap it at the leaf and the edge with our TA series platform. You can, you can send it to a, you can cluster it with our highly intelligent HC platform with both inline protection at the perimeter as well as SSL decryption or NetFlow generation. We have a whole a slew of portfolio of uh, intelligent services that I'll cover in a little bit, but here are some for the security use case specifically to decrypt the SSL traffic or generate high fidelity NetFlow as well. And then you got your virtual. I mean, virtual is important. I mean, you got your physical infrastructure covered, but what about the virtual the, for the host, the traffic within the hypervisor or within the blade center, for example? So we got the virtual, uh, virtual appliance as well to get that traffic over. And finally, which we'll cover, we'll talk a lot about, is the centralized policy management as well. So this, this Gigaview FM manages this entire visibility fabric, and, and the traffic is forward to the tools. Now that's all great. But what if the monitoring tools need to adjust traffic, right? This is not static. We are, you know, how, how, does, how does the software definition of, of this traffic get changed? I mean, you, you might need to change traffic based on new threats or new KPIs. And how does that change? So what we also introduced recently is a set of REST APIs on our policy controller, the fabric manager, for the, either the monitoring tools or the IT operators to go change the visibility fabric to get more information. Maybe generate NetFlow. Maybe de cap, uh, capture packets on demand. So all those will be, will be supported through a set of REST APIs that can control the visibility fabric. So a set of portfolio, we just want to, uh, you know, since the last time we met in September, we have refreshed our portfolio. Um, I've added more uh, products into the portfolio, so we'll cover that quickly. So the visibility fabric nodes, the, the bread and butter of our infrastructure from the high-end H-series nodes, to the 1RU uh, HP1 and the HC2. We also introduced the white box uh, appliance as well. So we, uh, a white box, a generic white box on which our, our Gigaview OS, which can run on using an Oni bootloader on a white box, can provide the same traffic uh, services, traffic filtering and flow mapping to 
that can be clustered into our highly intelligent nodes using our clustering technology. So your traffic intelligence can be applied to the leaf traffic as well, anything, tra any traffic that's coming out of the leaf. So here are some traffic intelligence functions that we talked about already with NetFlow generation SSL decryption, but we have a plethora of other suite of intelligent applications as well, including slicing, masking. You can, you know, for VXLAN encapsulations, you may want to strip the traffic out before sending it to the monitoring infrastructure. Or even more importantly, packet filtering, if you want to look for a certain signature within the packet and want to send that traffic specifically to a monitoring tool, you could do that as well. And layered on top of that is fabric control. We talked about the GigaView fabric manager, a rich set of dashboards, widgets, and uh, user interface to control the entire visibility fabric. And now with the recent announcement, also, we also expose a set of REST APIs that can, be that can be consumed by either the monitoring appliances or third-party uh, applications or even the IT operators tools. So what is software-defined visibility? So now we've talked about the portfolio of products, but what does software-defined visibility really mean? So a typical software-defined framework is like this, right? You've got your infrastructure layer at the bottom, controlled by a control layer, which is a set of network services, and then a set of app business applications using APIs to program the control layer using, those, using, the, using the APIs to change the visibility fabric, I mean, or to change the infrastructure layer, for example. A new tenant might be formed, so a new application could be written to, to, to spawn off that new tenant. So we took the same construct and said, let's apply it on the visibility fabric, and let's see how does that evolve. So visibility fabric, just like what we just saw, we have a suite of products at the visibility fabric with our, with our you know, powered by our intelligent GigaSmart. Right, a set of uh, widgets and a, uh, a control layer, the GigaView FM, that controls the visibility fabric, right? rich UI and so on. But now with a new definition of APIs, a new uh, set of APIs that are exposed or published, you can write a set of applications that are on top using the APIs as well. But more importantly, this visibility fabric is feeding tools. Right? It could be a, a SIM tool, APM, NPM, or forensics tool. Well, that's good, right? But what about, how about if these tools can also program the visibility fabric as well, using the closed loop integration, using the same REST APIs? So you've got a dual, uh, a dual function here, a set of business applications written by the customer, or the tool vendor itself could write a business application to, monitor, to program the visibility fabric. And this is where JDSU will talk about what are some of the use cases that they, they will program the visibility fabric for. So let's double click on the control layer. So which is, which is give you fabric manager itself. This is the core that is managing the visibility fabric. And what are some of the functions within it? So it's the centralized fabric policy controller, right? Single pane of glass for all the management, configures the traffic policies, sets up the highly intelligent GigaSmart functions as well, at a glance views and so on and so forth. Also fabric wide reporting, a lot of the UI functions for your typical uh, network management operators uh, with audit, audit trails for compliance and so on. And finally, this also is the foundation for a software-defined visibility. Allows you to program the visibility fabric through APIs. So this is the new function for either the IT operators, IT operations management, or closed loop monitoring with the monitoring appliances. So this drives that functionality as well. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. <clears throat> so on the uh, REST, how much, so there's a lot of knobs and, and things that you can configure in, in Gigamon. How much of that is exposed to that API? Is it, is, it, is it literally all the knobs, and, or is it just a few, a few set of features? So, it's, so all the provisioning operations that you could do is all available at the first release, out of the gate. So we have a phased approach. The, the subsequent releases will have more statistics and so on. But the first release out of the gate has all the provisioning operations that you could do. You can create a flow map. Norm, Norm will show that in a demo of creating a flow map, a traffic policy. Also update the GigaSmart engine as well, applying new, some of the GigaSmart functions as well. So is your, is your controller uh, basically abstracting that towards REST API northbound or you're talking some, something else south? What, what are you talking southbound? To? So, so in, in fact, there is, we actually talk REST also southbound, but we are publishing the APIs and supporting the APIs from Fabric Manager okay. for now. So we do have an all, for example, a, a, a visibility fabric could be tens to hundreds of nodes, right? But the APIs will be from the Fabric Manager, so you don't have to respectively, you don't have to specifically know which node you're operating on. Right. In, in fact, our, our user interface itself uses REST to talk to the Fabric Manager server as well, so it's the same set of REST APIs that we publish as well. So quickly, so here's our rich set of dashboards that we talked about. 
uh, all the user functionality, you know, the, the UI definitions near double click for more detail. Uh, I won't spend too much time, Noam will show that in a demo. Again, a lot of trending information about the ports. So now, you, a good question that you asked about what are some of the statistics available, some of the APIs available. So over the next few months, we'll start ex publishing these APIs for the statistics as well. So you can, you can look at the monitoring of the traffic policies, monitoring of the port utilization. So. so that's on the UI front. So that exposes the publishers set of APIs. But look, let's look at the application layer. What are the APIs available? What are the use cases that we believe will drive this integration. So what we took was the fabric, the visibility fabric, and then we bucketized the functions into these five buckets, the inventory, inventory of the nodes, the ports, and the health of the, of the visibility fabric, provisioning, what we talked about just now, the flow mapping, the traffic policies, the gigasmart functions, the analytics. You can look at analytics in two functions. One is give the raw stats or give the top end stats. Right, that, that's, that's some of the intelligence that we could provide from Fabric Manager. Instead of, you, instead of customers just getting per port stats, maybe we condense it or we aggregate it and send it as, as top end or bottom end stats as well. And the notifications being the alerts and the events and so on. And the administrative functions primarily being config backup, firmware upgrades, and so on. So we bucketize the visibility Fabric functions into these buckets, and we believe any, anything new will fall into any of these buckets. Now, all of this is obviously managed by Fabric Manager, so we said, well, let's expose those as REST APIs to, to these use cases. The IT operations management, for example, a homegrown tool or an OSS BSS tool could consume these APIs and then plug into their dashboards if needed. Right? Look at the health of the visibility fabric, not just the health of the production network, but also the health of the visibility fabric. The other important thing where we talk about with JDSU is can their appliance program the visibility fabric as well? And then finally, the SDN controllers. So think of the scenario where a new virtual tenant is created or a new virtual network is created. You may want to monitor that specific uh, VXLAN ID, for example, either through VMware NSX or ACI. You could te technically use the, flow, the traffic policies and the Gigasmart functions to create that flow map as well. So what are some of the, let's double click a little bit on these use cases. So the monitoring tool specifically, what, what, what are those use cases really, right? So again, we, we're calling the detect, react, and respond to threats and analytics. So what does that mean? I, I'll have a few slides on that. Or you can get granular data, or maybe generate NetFlow, or decrypt SSL. Uh, why is that important? It's possible because you're getting more SSL traffic than expected, and you may want to decrypt that. Or you may, get, you may be getting SSL traffic on a certain port that you weren't expecting. You may want to, you may want to, you may want to look at that, if there's any nefarious activity going on. The second use case is the private cloud and tenant visibility. Obviously, we have a GigaView virtual machine uh, to, uh, to get the virtual traffic, but could we do automate that sequence? As new VMs come on board, can we automate the visibility in the virtual environments? The final use case is the IT operations management. This is the OSS, BSS integration, or even homegrown tools that you know, customers have customized dashboards in their environments. Would, could we use the APIs to program that or, or monitor that for capacity planning? So let's double click on each of these use cases. So this is a standard, standard picture of how the GigaView FM is managing the visibility fabric, sending the traffic to the tools, right? So here's one scenario. A security tool might be looking at a certain KPI and might want to generate NetFlow off that, right? Or maybe want to decrypt SSL traffic, or maybe want to capture on-demand pack, packet capture to a separate appliance as well for, for longer duration persistence. So again, all of this typically would have taken an IT operator to set up a ticket and so on. So this will, you know, these, these APIs could be used to program it based on the security appliances own KPIs themselves. The second scenario, so at the perimeter, usually uh, some of the, you know, Gigamon obviously supports the inline, inline support as well for the traffic tools or the, or the, or the, the IPSs or the IDSs or VAPs. Now they may usually are deployed out of band first before they go to inline mode. So in this case, Rather than an operator going and figuring out when to change it to inline mode, can the tool program to, to move the traffic, to, to move the appliance into an inline mode? Again, what, this is what we call the auto-adjust mode, right? Or update the traffic flows. And I was talking to some of, the, some of our tool partners. One of the use cases is if they know a certain traffic is bad, can they program Gigamon to drop it so they don't have to process that traffic, right? That, that, was, that was the drop traffic use case, which, which basically means you have to update the traffic flows based on that react and response scenario. The third use case, we talked about the private cloud. So if you look at uh, typical, you know, our integration with vCenter with APIs, that's all good. 
But if you have a private cloud monitoring management platform, as they, as they deploy new workloads or new VMs, they may want to enable virtual visibility as well. So in this case, let's say for, ex oops, okay. let's say for example, they use the vCenter APIs, deploy the virtual, new virtual machine, and there's traffic flowing between these two VMs. Now they may want to enable virtual visibility for that tenant only, because you know, they've paid services or whatever. Now that could trigger deployment of the GigaView VM appliance, set up the traffic policies, and get the virtual traffic over as well. So it's not just the physical, but even the virtual traffic could be monitored. That's in the private cloud data center monitoring deployment. The fourth use case is the IT operations. This, so this actually was what drove us initially to start thinking about REST APIs because customers had heterogeneous networks. They were, they were using that using for capacity planning and so on, but the visibility fabric, they had to get it from a different source. So the ask was, can, you also, can we also integrate your visibility fabric into our OSS BSS tools? So we said, why not, right? So we started using the, these APIs could be used for inventory stats, in, inventory and status as well as statistics for capacity planning. How many ports do I have? What are the ports operating at? Do I need to get new ports? Or how does the port operate last week versus this week? So again, the statistics will be coming up in the, in the future release, but the use cases to get that. And then this final use case also is, imp is pretty important because uh, some of the ticketing systems out there, either Remedy or ServiceNow or whatever ticketing systems out there, operate on some common criteria, common tickets, right? So a new VLAN has come on board or a new subnet has come on board. I need to monitor that. Usually that's a user-driven operation, but they trigger some APIs or API scripts based on a certain ticket. They could automatically program the visibility fabric for monitoring. So that's the ticketing and provisioning operation with the use cases as well. And the final use case is the SDN stack. How do we complement the SDN stack? So in the, in the SDN stack, you've got your physical network with an overlay virtual network using VXLAN, NVGRE, and with an SDN controller monitoring or managing this, this, this virtual network, and some northbound applications written on top of that. So if you marry that to a visibility fabric, you've got the same thing. You've got your visibility fabric portfolio. We talked about the header stripping and adaptive packet filtering to specifically look at a tenant traffic. And Fabric Manager, which manages this entire visibility fabric portfolio, now the glue between the SDN controller and the Fabric Manager will be the REST APIs. So they can, they can program the visibility fabric as a spin off new virtual networks. Maybe they want to monitor that virtual network as well, and that could be using the REST APIs. And then this GigaView FM obviously can be integrated into the respective third party applications as well. So that's the software defined visibility stack. So we have five use cases that we came up when we talk about the REST APIs, and here those are, and obviously we'll keep building more on, on top of those. So finally, so the same picture with when we were monitoring in this fashion, now with the REST API, we've, got, we've sort of closed the loop with either threat detect and response or integrate with IT operations. 